So this is a bit of a different video. There's no long intro. There's no welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast and the theme music and then the outro. Do you know why? Because my laptop has busted people. But, you know, I've got to give the crowd exactly what they want and what they would expect, which is some kind of test match review. When my laptop is working, when I'm back in the UK, Santoki and I will chop it up and we'll do it properly and we'll look ahead towards the, the second test in Guyana and so much and so forth. But I kind of wanted to just quickly have a look back at um, the first test match. Obviously, match drawn, West Indies ended on something like 201, was it, or 207 for five, needing another 90 runs to go to try and win the test match with about five overs left. And that's where I kind of want to start. Because in a very weird sense, South Africa were ahead at every single point of this test match. But if you look at the scorecard as a whole, you have to say that it's a good draw for the West Indies. That Some people try and be defeatist and say, oh, West Indies batted for a draw and they didn't really try to chase the target of 298 to win and so on and so forth. But people do have to remember something pretty crucial here. Going into this test match series, let's not forget that South Africa are ranked significantly above the West Indies. Let's not forget that historically, we do not have a good test record. In fact, we've got an atrocious test record against the South Africans, whether home or away. We rarely get draws, much less wins, right? And going into that, yes, obviously, six sessions in total were, were lost to the rain and Maybe if rain didn't happen, maybe the result would have been different. But that's if, buts, maybes, permutations, etc. All we can do is work with what we saw. And what we saw was that on day five, South Africa batted quickly on the, on the, in the final hour, as we expected, and set West Indies 297 to win. People can debate whether South Africa should have declared earlier. They can debate whether South Africa should have batted quicker in their first innings and, and, and so on and so forth. We can debate whether West Indies were subpar in their first innings. It wasn't a pitch that was conducive to either spin or quick bowling. It was a hard pitch to bowl on. It was a hard pitch to make, I mean, South Africa's second innings maybe defies this argument somewhat, but certainly up front, it was never a pitch where you just made fluent runs at the beginning. You still had to grind, you still had to work. And I think certainly the South Africans and uh, West Indies in their respective first innings bowled tight, defensive lines that made it hard for the batters to score fluently and freely. There's a reason neither side had a centurion um, in the first innings. And if anything, by the by the time West Indies came to bat with the sunshine out in the second session, I actually thought it got a bit flatter and easier to bat on. It was never a good bowling track, and which is why you've got to give credit to Keshav Maharaj and Jamel Warrikan for taking, I think, eight and seven wickets respectively. But they didn't bowl down people, Kevin Hodges' wicket notwithstanding on the last day. What Maharaj and Jamel Warrikan got their rewards for was keeping it tight, wicket to wicket, variations of pace and little subtle just variations in general. But it wasn't a pitch that was super conducive for them to be getting eight or seven wickets. It was a pitch where they bowled tight and tested the patience regularly of the batters at the other end. But anyways, let's uh, kind of pivot back to the original point that I wanted to make. South Africa were ahead at every point of the game. And when West Indies were, I think when Casey Carty fell and West Indies were 61 for three, I reckon the large majority of West Indian supporters would have said to themselves, West Indies are going to lose this test match. If the rain doesn't come, West Indies are going to lose this test match. And actually, from that point when Carty fell, uh, Kevin Hodge, obviously Ali Kathanez with his 92, Jason Holder with another mature knock. The knocks aren't substantial from Jason, but in England, and that he's carried it on into the Caribbean, I think he's shown some maturity in the level of his batting. It seems silly to say Jason's shown maturity like he's not a mature test match cricketer. But what I mean is, having moved up to number six, Jason, I think, has accepted that there's a different level of responsibility that he has to show um, with the bat. And if you're going to get Jason out, you have to get him out as opposed to 
he's going to play it loose and give it away or anything like that. I thought his 36 in the first innings was good. And I thought his 31 not out, even with the injury at the end, was even better. Played the situation, never really looked in any trouble and steered us home to make sure that the result was never in doubt in terms of West Indies drawing the test match. And obviously Josh came in at the back end as well. Where there's some things to be critical of, yes, certainly. Um, in the first innings, about five or six batters, including Jamal Warwick, and got a start. And possibly we should be looking at like Craig Sturchard allowed himself to get run out. That was schoolboy cricket. Mikhail Louis, 30 odd. Casey Carty, 42. Uh, Jason, 30 odd. Kavim, I think, got 30 odd. And you want one of your top six to kick on once they get a start, and nobody did. And we can be, we can, we can have constructive critique of that. And I think it would be right to have constructive critique um, of that. 2 3 3 was a very subpar score at the bare minimum overnight. I said West Indies should be trying to get a minimum of 270, and that would even have been subpar. But I had to take in the fact that we are not as strong a batting unit as some of the established uh, test sides in the world. So I would have accepted about 270. Um, two seven five. So there were some weaknesses with that first innings batting for batting for sure. Although I think uh, Rabada cleaned up the tail well when he got the new ball. Um, I do want to praise the bowlers because obviously South Africa won the toss. Batted first, had the best of conditions, um, and I thought the bowlers stuck to the task manfully. Roach came back, two wickets looked good. Seals obviously three, Warrican four. And I think Holder picked up one as well. Multi looked completely off the boil. I thought he bowled too quick. I don't think he learnt quick enough the length or the speed that you had to bowl at, bowl, uh, bowl with, sorry, um, on that particular track. And I mean, hopefully he improves uh, when we get to Guyana because I'm expecting him to play in Guyana. Um, and then obviously, like I say, South Africa... <laughs> I always find those situations difficult when you, when you know that a team's going to put you under the pump because they need quick runs. The bowling side can talk all they want about, yeah, we're going to bowl tight and we're going to make it, we're going to slow down the game and make sure the game doesn't get away from us. But I always think it's advantage back inside when they know that they come out wickets in hand and you just, it doesn't matter that it's Red Bull, the way that there's so much T20 cricket around the world nowadays, that it means nothing to a good Red Bull side to just blaze runs and score them quickly. South Africa win at like six runs and over. Wasn't surprised at that in the slightest. Is pretty much what I expected. So we took the tap that I thought we were going to take. But ultimately, like I say, when it came time to see out the day and quote unquote pretend to go to, to chase the victory in 298, I thought over the piece and given where we ended the day, think you have to say well done the the the, the analogy that I used in our discord group was I said the match reminded me of like an FA Cup tie where the weaker side obviously in the FA Cup tie and we've held on for a 1-1 draw with a good defensive rear guard performance which deserves a replay in and of itself so to take the analogy a bit further sometimes you can draw a match because you've been good in defence. That doesn't mean you haven't played well. It just means you've been good in one specific aspect. Were South Africa always knocking on the door? Could they have scored another goal to win the match? I'm taking the analogy too deep now. Yes, they could have. But did we hold on for the draw? Not in terms of desperation, but just in terms of being resolute? Yeah. Yeah. And... To finish off the metaphor, we therefore go to Guyana and we get a replay. And I think that's fair. I think that's fair. I can't be too critical of the side. And in fact, with Alex 92, supported by Kavem with the 29, I think he got, and Jason with the 31 out, that, that was the moment of the test match, other than the first day when we bowled South Africa out for 3-5-7. That was the moment of the test match where I was most proud, where actually with Alex and Kavem through to Jason and Josh, I didn't think... I was never, yes, of course, you always have that thing in the back of your mind, you're like, we could lose this test match. But I felt kind of safe. I was, I kind of was like, yeah, I think we're going to be fine here. I think we're going to be able to, to see this one out. And this is why I was so adamant to kind of say, I didn't mind that Craig got out. Obviously, the way he got out, absolutely horrendous. He said in the post-match that it was poor execution, fine, but... If you try and hit a six after the third ball of an innings against the guy who was tormentoring Chief in the first innings, 
poor execution or not, good excuse or not, it looks bad. But here's the job. Here's the job. You can't have your cake and eat it with Craig. There's some of you who will criticize Craig and be like, how are you going to get out like that? You're the captain. You're supposed to do X, Y, Z. But then when Craig blocks the ball and bats long, 100 plus balls, blocks it, isn't going at a, 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 a great strike rate, you're going to cuss him for that as well. So then comes out, tries to show intent as if to show maybe we should try goal for these runs. Poor execution gets out, pure cussing. What way do you want it for Craig? And all those uncles saying, oh, Craig needs to hold a drop. Nonsense. Just bun that chat. That's dead talk. That's, there's no sense in that talk. Pure emotional reaction talk. Did Craig get out badly in the first and second innings? Yes. <laughs> do we have anyone better than Craig? No. So dead that talk. I'm not even going to engage any further. Dead all that. Craig will go away. He will reflect. And we know, as I said, in England, back Craig to get through things like that. He's got enough strength of character and faith in his ability um, and his mindset is strong to, 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 to obviously overcome whatever that was about. And he goes again in Guyana. So anyways, what, what do we rate that test match performance? Six out of 10. It's about six out of 10. We were never ahead. Um, we never looked like we could really win it, but we made sure that we never looked like we could lose it. So it's a six out of 10 for me. We can try and give different individual ratings and that can come later on when I get back to England. That come, can come later on in the week. Big up Alec for his 92. Big up um, Jamel Warwick and six in the match. Big up Jaden Seals as ever. Um, three in the first innings. I thought Roach looked good on his comeback. Kavem, I know he like only hit a 30 and a 20, not 30 odd and a 29, but he looked gritty. Again, Casey showed some positive stuff that we thought he was capable of in his test match debut of 40 odd and a 30 odd and Jason I think looks like dare I say it dare I say it Jason looks like a test match number six not a India test match number six or an England test match number six or an Australia test match number six but a West Indies test match number six I'm sure people are going to be critical I'm sure people are going to say what do you mean match the Tell me someone better than. And again, it all depends on what you think Jason's role in the side is. Um, I no longer see Jason as a strike bowler. And if he's going to bat six, he's got to be somebody who contributes with the bat first and foremost. Well, he hit a 36 and he hit a 31 not out. I'm, I'm fine with that. Obviously, I'd like to see some 50s and stuff, but I'm fine with that. I think Jason is showing the signs of him understanding the, the kind of mission that he has been set to bat six for West Indies. We're just going to need to see a bit more output from one, two, three, four, five before we start getting critical about what Jason does or doesn't do batting at number six. But anyways, listen, it's a little quick test match reaction. There's probably plenty of stuff I've missed out. I'm recording this in a different way because of the laptop issues. So I'm, I've probably missed certain things out. But as ever, it's my final day in Trinidad. So... Um, Thank you to everyone. Sorry, shout out. Shout out every single person I mess, met in Trinidad. Shout out, um, uh, so, so many names. Shout out Panda. Shout out Fireball. Shout out Werewolf. You lot know who you are. Um, uh, shout out Brian. Shout out, see, I'm forgetting. Shout out everybody. Shout out everybody I met in Trinidad. So much hosp uh, hospitality. So much friendship. So much good vibes, you know. Um, shout out Brian for taking me to the doubles, man. Um, <laughs> um, and it's been great. It's been great. And it's been a little bit of, it's been, um, I kind of think it's been kind of instructive to see that CCP on tour could become a thing. Next stop, I don't know where. I'll look at West Indies itinerary and see where we can take this next. But um, I'd always wanted to, to go and follow the West Indies outside of England and um, and, and not just Jamaica, obviously, um, outside of England and, and take CCP to the people and so on and so forth. So thank you to everyone I met. Um, it's been great. Um, obviously, I fly back tomorrow. So, um, yeah, CCP to the world and back. And uh, like, share and subscribe, people. Keep following the movement. And I'll be with you all soon when I get back to England. Peace.